Squad's favorite. It is containing COVID, and it's proudly brought to you by Ambrose, IT&E, and Kalu Enterprises. Bank of Guam and Coast 360. There you go. They're bringing our Banking 671 uh, moment here to the show. It's 840, the 28th day of April. Uh, kind of what you need to know, the governor has said she intends to extend our public health emergency for at least another month. Okay, and we're going to do uh, news, running a little bit behind on the news for this hour, but okay. we've got we've got a lot of, yeah, Bree's like, no, we're good, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get uh, Sergeant Paul Tapau of the Guam to, uh, Police Department onto the show. Good morning, Sarge. Hey, Hoffman, good morning. Good morning. You guys have been busy, I see. Uh, small kind, somewhat. Small kind. It's, it's the, uh, it's, it's the dues that we have to do, so yeah. uh, it's expected of the Guam Police Department. You know, one of the unfortunate things we've been hearing is about uh, these school break-ins. And we're not talking about one, and we're not talking about one time uh, for certain uh, schools. So why don't we just start with, um, I guess, Inrohan Middle School. You know, I'm, I'm slowly gathering the reports. We've been uh, doing some compilements, and um, our focus was pretty much here in the site because, you know, I'm attached to the Central Precinct Command, and... Um, you know, the, uh, I, was, I was speaking to the district commander, and yes, you're correct. You know, um, we are seeing an uptick in school break-ins has been reported. I know Adriana did a special or a story last week regarding the uh, break-in at the uh, Weddingale Elementary School. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she's been um, pressing for more about what, uh, you know, what was happening at M.E. Lohan. And uh, these are some of the schools that we're mentioning. Even Asumbo Elementary and Middle School, I believe, are also victims of burglary and school break-ins. Uh, GW. We did report about the uh, burglary and, of course, the arson. Uh, we're working closely with Guam Fire in this. And just last week, GW was a uh, victim of burglary two days in a row. And, you know, in line with that, we are also working with um, the break-in at, at Luhan that happened again last week. So um, we are seeing the uptick in uh, school break-ins. And, we, you know, we've been working diligently with our neighborhood watch program and uh, working closely with the precinct commander. And, uh, you know, just yesterday, I was speaking with the uh, district commanders for the central precinct and the southern uh, southern side and uh you know we're, we're doing some compliments and everything to try and put a, a finger on really what's happening within these areas so you know what once we get our you know our bearings to where we're going with this investigation uh we're working closely with our juvenile investigators and of course our cid investigators to really curb and address this issue with the school break-ins you you said uh, JIS. Are, are you, is there a reason to believe that a majority of these uh, school break-ins are from knuckleheads? It you know it it, it we're 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 looking at the entire community because really uh, you know when 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 we look at crimes of uh, of entry you know there, there's always has to be an MO behind everything um, whether they're they're going to to you know to commit theft you know high end goods high end products. Uh, and so forth. Um, you know, back in the heyday, we saw break-ins that involved um, that of copper wire theft. And of course, mm-hmm. you know, we've, we've, we've associated different types of uh, MOs with, with different types of school break-ins. Some schools were just being broken into just to be vandalized. And uh, what, we're, what we've been getting and gathering from a lot of the reports, a lot of it is really vandalism. So, you know, when you associate that with adolescent behavior, that's one thing. And that's one of those precursors that we look for. So, you know, working closely with that, you know, with our investigators, this is where um, our patrol officers who generate the preliminary report find the evidence to lead us to where, or, you know, the findings that are left behind to lead our investigators as to where we are moving with the investigation. Mm -hmm. You said arson. Which school uh, was there a fire at? That was GW. Uh, That was reported a few weeks ago. And we're working closely. We've been getting a lot of tips that were generated to the Guam Crime Stoppers regarding this. And, uh, you know, we had a meeting, command staff meeting, and I've been following up with our our criminal investigation division. And, uh, you know, they've been been, uh, moving with the leads that we're getting. So we're working closely with them because there's two sides to this. There's the school breaking aspect and, of course, the arson part. So um, I reached out to, uh, you know, firefighter uh, to Kevin Wrighty, and we're, we're working closely with, with their arson investigators in determining, of course, the causation of the fire and, you know, trying to apprehend the individuals that were responsible for the school breaking and the school fire at GW. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're, we're seeing this and we're tracking this and, you know, we're, we're working closely. And I've been working closely and communicating with the district commanders and in, in, in providing more, you know, information as it comes. You know, we, 
uh, that to do alone. We were tracking the Estumbo Elementary Middle School, um, and I believe Weningal was one, uh, a few of the schools that were reported in the northern side. And in the central side, it was pretty much GW and MU Lohan that we're tracking. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but which one was the most recent one? The recent one was last week up at uh, Donia, uh, MU Lujan, mm -hmm. which was reported last week, Monday, and uh, GW was Thursday and Friday. Now, GW, again, is, is, is unique because, you know, we're looking at vandalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the school officials had given the estimate, you know, damages, and we're looking over $20,000 worth of damages mm -hmm. that was done to the school. And just for GW? Yeah, just, you what? know, just including some of the school property that's utilized. Uh, as part of the lessons, because I believe uh, one of the classes that was broken into was a marketing class, and you know the equipment and instruments that they have there to teach the kids about you know running a retail store, retail out outlet. It's really damaged, you know, for uh, no apparent reason. It was just really, uh, it's 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 when when you look at damages beyond uh, that amount, you know, it really it, re it really has to have the question as to what was the intent and what was the uh, the ammo behind the break-in were they looking for crimes of opportunity or looking for crimes of vandalism so these are some again some of the investigatory aspects of what we look for oh, so gw though you said was a few weeks ago right you said that was a few weeks ago that was last week that oh was gw last was week, last Thursday week yeah. Friday. Yeah. so sarge are you bas basically what's happening is people know that the um the presence is isn't what it Mm -hmm. should be and they're just taking advantage of it i mean with the the type of break-ins you're describing it seems like these knuckleheads feel like they got all night to just mm -hmm. you know it's, it's 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 pretty much expected when you have like holidays so you know uh absent of COVID 19 whenever school goes into a long break or whenever school goes into a three-day holiday um uh, you know that's one of the things that we look out for um you know it's one thing that is being brought up is because of the fact that some uh the schools are not in operation mode and it's only being some of the schools are being utilized for um the grab and go mills that they're they're only discovering this so you know whether you have uh, schools that are operational from a, a duration of time where you know the staff they make their assessments but you know absent of COVID 19 when whenever we're moving into spring break summer vacation or a, a long three-day holiday you know we can expect this to happen within some of the schools uh, throughout the community. Now we have, um, you know, the, this extended um, um, emergency, uh, public health emergency, and you know, uh, just trying to keep up with with, with the days and, and what's happening in the schools. So, you know, um, we we uh, Major Chong, the uh, acting police commander, has ramped up ramped up the patrol efforts, and as we close the, you know, the uh, break away from the the road closures, our officers will be deployed back into the precinct. So. We're going to be seeing an increase of patrol officers right. out there. You know, we're operating now out of a uh, uh, one one of five operations. So, you know, this 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 is good news as as our patrol officers come out and, of course, working with the administration and providing the other regulatory uh, law enforcement agencies to assist with the quarantine sites. We're able to pull our officers out from that area and focus back on on the patrol aspect. So, you know, Major Chong is tracking as 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 we get our officers back how we're farming them out to the precinct. So we're going to see, uh, you know, a number of increase in the patrol officers. And you know, this is a good sign as, as, as we break away and, uh, you know, the, the governor and the administration is, 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 is providing that, that assistance by, by uh, you know, deploying some of the uh, regulatory uh, uh, law enforcement agencies, such as Guam Customs, Port Authority of Guam Conservation Officers to assist us with, with dealing with the COVID site. What about the guard, uh, Sarge? Uh, so we had the guard at these uh, checkpoints uh, with the uh, Guam police officers. So now that we're not going to be doing the checkpoints anymore, are we maybe talking with the guard and getting them involved in some of these? Because I, I think it's just about visibility, right? When people see that there's some type of authority presence that's visible, they're going to think twice. So have we uh, started that conversation? Is any of that in the works? Uh, you know, we, we we still have to stay in the aspect of you know the people's constitutional rights and those that are deputized and and uh, you know uh, with the authority to enforce the law. So you know, if we move into that state, then we move into another level of of a community style, which you know we we don't want. Maybe to they can do it educationally, Sarge. <laughs> Pass we, out a pamphlet. Hey, did you know you're not supposed <laughs> to be breaking into this school right now and damaging all the equipment? Thank you. <laughs> so, 
so you know, you know the the, the thing here that we're looking. I mean, at what's the difference with somebody who's like you know your community crime watch? I mean, uh, yeah, you know that's where we're working at. And last week, you know, we we were reach. I reached out to uh, you know myself and and uh, you know some of the officers were asking the the community members within the neighborhood who watch the police. You know, watch watch our community assets, such as the schools and the businesses that are closed down uh, as a result of the the public health emergency. So. You know, we're getting some good good response and everything and you know we're like i said you know we're, we're tracking what's happening in, in some of the areas and you know it's becoming a um, uh you know um it, it, it's it's where, where we're doing the compartment of the cases and of course the uh the mo of breaking and of course what's happening during the course of the breaking so you know moving forward with that you know the district commanders have actually uh have, have deployed uh some sort of um, approach in how to address this so you know um, once we get our officers back again, you know, this is where we're going to see um, our, our visibility with the officers out there and, and provide more services. So we have, you know, we have our curfew task force that's out and about. So that's, that's, that's made it, you know, it, it, it's a great deal with, with, you know, curbing the curfew, uh, the hours as the numbers have gone down drastically. And we report on that. Uh, we reported that with the Guam Police Department alongside with the Joint Information Center about the, uh, you know, the downward uh, tick with the, uh, the curfew violators. So, you know, in, in working with that, you know, our officers that are attached are attached to the, the curfew task force are also um, going into the parks, going into these public areas, doing periodic checks within the schools. And, you know, sometimes it's hit and miss. You know, either we're 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 there and we're able to apprehend and, and you know um, prevent a, a school breaking from happening because of the presence, or you know we may you know uh, have not seen the opportunity to deploy officers in these certain areas but you know nonetheless these are things in which we're going to take take into consideration of right. the time and everything so there's a lot of things that go into uh you know addressing these issues so, right you know we're, we're working towards that sarge uh there was a couple comments here uh utilize the various village chats i know you guys have, have uh, continually asked uh the neighborhood watch groups to to step up and to be vigilant um and then uh, someone had also put, uh, Frank Lana put, and the parent PTO. So I'm wondering who's calling in these uh, burglaries and these robberies. Is it people who are associated with the schools, or is it just yes. you guys? Okay. Yes, yes. These are school officials within the respective schools. Right. And, you know, the GW is a spot for the grab and go. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, the operation and everything, this is where they're discovering the, uh, right. the break in. So, you and know, and then starts the layout of GW because I went to high school there. It's such that somebody could break into an area and not be visible from any of the roadways that are around that school yeah it is it is you know that that, that poses a challenge and everything and you know where um where people are are um, you know uh, transiting to and from you know we ask the community to be the eyes and ears but you're right g-dub is a big school you know i know you were the ruler of the school only in a sophomore year only a <laughs> you know the ins and outs and everything and it is big you know i i i, I did go to g -Dub, you know and walking from the gym down to the regular class you know the classrooms it, it, it takes its toll and you know you don't want to get the tardy slip because of the the distance so we blame the distance that was the reason why we were tardy miss right we have to walk from the gym over <laughs> to the classroom but it is big yeah and uh you know um you know the the, the perimeter fences in itself it really access as it turns but when people scale the fences and they're able to gain access entry point into there that's where it becomes a challenge for our officers but um you know we've uh, prior to COVID 19 we we formulated a plan where we actually sat with the principals at the northern site and we worked closely with them with uh, with um, you know the mapping of the schools um working obtaining combinations with the the, the locks and everything so that our officers can be doing periodics and this is where in line with Simon Sanchez and F.B. Leon Guerrero, when they were constantly being broken into on a regular school day uh, right. operation, and uh, you know we were able to to, um, to to work with that and and bring the numbers down to bare minimum to even zero within a school year. So these are good things in which you know we have in play that we can actually deploy as part of our, our community already policing and working closely with the schools. But now that schools are not in operation uh, due to the emergency lockdown, it's really hard to get officials out there when you know they're actually reporting the right crimes yeah or, but i, I want to i know a bunch of school employees and i want to commend them because they do go out on their own and just check up on the school you know they what these are people who work at the schools but obviously they're not working now 
but they're making that effort to go in and kind of like check things out. So uh, people are kind of keeping a, a, an eye and an ear out. Sergeant, I wanted to ask you, we got a tip here about, uh, was there a car burglary at the Dedido precinct that you can tell us about? Yes, yes, I sent the release out okay. uh, yesterday. So, um, uh, you know, uh, we reported on that and it was just, uh, How know, do you I'm burgle a car at the Dedido precinct, Sarge? <laughs> I'm just like, whew. It's, you know, it, uh, when I was reading the report and I was generating the report for the media, I was really, you know, um, you know, I, I, I can't really explain the, the mindset of the individual. <laughs> and, yeah. Take you know, balls. Like playing, it's, it's like playing Russian roulette with, you know, is we going to get caught or you're not going to get caught? Right. And it just so happened that the off-duty officer was in the right place at the right time. But, you know, could have prevented more car break-ins. It actually prevented more car breaking. Yeah. So, you know, so good job. Good and let's uh, end on that good note there, uh, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Stay safe. Happy belated birthday, Sabrina. And, Thank uh, you. I'll give you my list when you get everybody to go in front of the line. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Take Sarge. Care All right, Take, care. Take care. All right. 8, 8.56, uh, Sergeant Paul Tapau. Let's keep it going here. He's been on the line. Uh, Frank Mansell from FEMA. FEMA Frank, good hey, morning. Frank. Half a day. Good morning. I hope you didn't cramp from holding on for so long. <laughs> well, I'm so sorry to hear that the crime...